Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. So I'm your host, John Harris, and today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Seventh Dimension. And they have a new album called Black Sky, which was released on June 18th via Corrupted Records. And right now I'm being joined by Luca to share some more information about what the band's got going on. We can talk about my rainbow pad and where I, where I take all my important notes, like the notes that I just made with Luca. But that's going to be kept a secret. So those of you, maybe we'll, you'll find out at the end of the show. That's my little cliffhanger. Uh, so Luca, nice. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you, and uh, good morning, good evening, or whatever fits uh, the time zone, wherever the viewers are, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, something, actually, you mentioned time zone for viewers. This is going to air at 8 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time in North America, so which is usually, like, what, 5, 4 or 5 p.m. in Europe, uh, 10 o'clock. And then add, a, then add another seven hours to get here. Exactly, to Tokyo. So, you know, I find... I just got off a call with somebody from Australia. I find I can get on the blower with somebody. That's a North American term too. The phone is called a blower. I don't know why, but All I right. get, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get on the blower and go call. Anyway, so yeah, I can get on the blower <laughs> with with Australia, but for some reason Japan is in this special time zone that makes it virtually impossible for where I'm at to chat with them unless I want to chat at like three thirty in the morning. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right now it's like five, uh, five in the morning right here. But it's pretty, well, pretty much all right. I'm mostly concerned about not waking up my girlfriend. But uh, so far, so good. This is gonna get kinky. But do you have a Japanese girlfriend? Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> is that why you left Sweden for the Japanese girlfriend? Oh, totally. No. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, there, there, are, there are many different uh, factors that brought me to Japan in the first place. Uh, but. Um, so yeah, we'll 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 see what what happens uh, from now on. We, we've been talking about moving back to Sweden together from from here. So okay, that may, is that getting easier as a thought. I mean, how has the pandemic been in Japan? It's uh, it's been frustrating because uh, uh, from here it's been like watching the whole world kind of going um, going ahead, and so it feels like the rest of the world has been kind of. On, on, on the track of getting back to kind of where it was before and here we're pretty much where we were like a year ago or that's how it feels like now the vaccination has finally kind of started to really kick, like kicking kicking in here uh, i'm uh, still struggling with finding the uh, the slots to uh, to to book to book the first dose, uh, so right now that seems to be impossible to do. But for a long time, depend um, for a long time, nothing was really going on here. It was just just the country entering into uh, into lockdowns, and then the lockdown would uh, would end, and we would have a slight rise, and there would be a new lockdown, a slight rise, a new lockdown, and so on and so forth. And so that's been frustrating, and um, it, it it did have effects on the album as well, because. We, I was supposed to make a visit to uh, Sweden back in August, where a lot of uh, the work with the album was supposed to uh, take place. But uh, due to the pandemic, I haven't been able to uh, visit uh, Sweden at all. So that kind of helped postponing uh, the album release quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this sounds incredible. I mean, it sounds like quite the journey to get this record to where... It is today where you're now chatting with me about you're 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 in the promotional phase. I mean, you're this is the finish line, baby. Yeah, exactly, and it's it, it feels great to finally have it out. There were there were there were so many frustrating occasions where the album would be postponed because we would have uh, the studio booked for uh, vocal, the vocal sessions, and every time we had a, the studio booked, somebody would have just symptoms of being sick sick and during and because we were in a pandemic the symptoms would be enough for kind of the the studio to be like all right no we can't have any 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 vocal rec recording just in case it's covid right mm -hmm. and so we would have to cancel postpone maybe we would not be able to book the studio for another two weeks and then another person would have symptoms then and we would have to cancel again it would just be yeah it was a nightmare but yeah like you said, finally, the album is out. It's been out for a while, and we can just sit here and talk about it, and that's that's the, the best part when everything is just done, and we, we can just enjoy the, the, the finished product. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, freaking lutely, baby. Now, speaking of the final product, two questions for you, Luca. And yes. if you want, I can write it down on my rainbow pad, which I'll, I'll just keep taunting the audience with. What is in the rainbow pad? Uh, the two questions that I just created in my head. That's what's in the rainbow pad. So I haven't written it down yet. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting weird all of a sudden. Uh, I've been watching a lot of really crappy YouTube videos where people are like, oh, by the way, you want to know what's going on? I'll tell you in five minutes. But in the meantime, please click like and subscribe. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't do that stuff because I have a self-esteem. Um, <laughs> but my first question is, so you said the album's been out for a while. Yes. What's the response been like? How, how, is, how does that kind of like how does that feel slash what has the response been like, which is kind of two questions in itself. So maybe there's three questions because I have, a, I have another question. But the first question we'll go with is you said it's been out for a while. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's been, uh, I think, almost uh, a month now uh, in, in just another three days. And the, re- the response has been great. Uh, we were... Uh, we were a little bit unsure of how, how the response would be because this album is a little bit different from our previous one. Uh, so, like our previous album was this huge double CD, two hour long story album from beginning to end, uh, which was also kind of different in uh, music wise because it was it had it had a very storytelling element to it. So the music was very kind of soundtracky at at times. And that, that was the first album where we started to get a little more exposure and people started to notice us. And uh, but with this album we kind of wanted to go the opposite route because we, we couldn't do the same thing all over again. So we decided to go with something a little bit more heavier than we have done before. Uh, obviously the the run that the the run time of the album is a lot shorter than uh, than our previous one, like from two hours to uh, around uh, forty eight minutes, and the uh, the songs are not really part of one big story; they're more like standing on their own, and so um, we were thinking like you know what if people are going to want a corrupted lullaby two, or what if people are expecting. Uh, another one of those kind of big concept albums and so we were thinking like uh, ho- I, we, ho- we hope this won't be like underwhelming for them but uh, but on the contrary the, the response has been uh, awesome and uh, we are the kind of band who really we try to read everything that is said uh, and written about us on the internet so uh, we kind of pay attention to what what people really think, and uh, the, yeah, the response has been has been great, and it's been very uh, a big inspiration for us as well. And uh, so, so that, that that's been super cool. Uh, people really like the new direction, and uh, uh, th- that's awesome because we see all these people. We, we can see that that it, a lot of these fans are the same people that discovered us with the last one, mm-hmm. uh, and we're getting a lot of new people at the same time. So it's uh, I think. From both promotional wise and uh, sell, like in, te- in terms of sales, we've had the best uh, the best release month we've had uh, yet uh, by far. So it's yeah, it's been doing really great. Perfect. Something else you mentioned, and you kind of explained this a little bit, but this was my second question on yeah. the ra- on the rainbow pad. This was my second question that I was going to ask, and. <laughs> Thankfully, you kind of gave me a little bit of bait, which is awesome, where you said this is different from our previous album. And you'd mentioned some things uh, with regard to that shorter runtime, not exactly a, a, a story arc with, you know, a beginning and an end and a, and a protagonist or an antagonist or whatever. But my question basically is what did you set out to create? And with regard to what you had said, was it intentional? Did you guys sit down, you know, when you were hashing out demos before pre-pro and say, you know what, we did the two-hour thing, we did the storyline, let's do something that isn't a storyline, let's do something that is around 48 minutes, or did this just happen? Uh, no, it, we, it was something that we decided to uh, to go for. So we had, a, I think we, it's, it all started with writing like a couple of the songs that would end up on the album, and that will, would kind of give a... A sense of the direction we wanted to take, but I think very very soon after that we had a we had a talk about it and we we decided that you know what um, we all we all like really heavy stuff as well, but we've never had really that much uh, heaviness in our music. So let's do an album that really g- gives us that relief of getting some of uh, some of the heavier side of us out. 
So that was decided beforehand. And uh, the length that you're talking about now is uh, was also uh, decided in the same uh, during the same kind of discussions. Uh, and it um, like doesn't mean that that's going to be any like the standard from now on or something like that. It was just what was right for this time or what we felt was the right thing for this time. And uh, I think um, like we wanted all we wanted to also break away from some of some of our old habits and uh, one of them being that we used to have a lot of songs that had these very long intros and long like keyboard based or pad based intros before the song would actually kick in right and uh, sometimes you'd 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 uh, put like two three minutes just on on, on doing that and uh, so by removing some of these habits as well the the songs kind of automatically became uh, shorter and uh, you're and, kidding and, you, uh, you lob off a three minute <laughs> intro and your song became sh- I just, I'm laughing because I can't tell you Luca I receive hundreds of emails a week from bands wanting to be on the show 10 seconds is a lot of time at that point yeah and if you actually like stop and count to 10 at 10 seconds, it's, it's a lifetime. So, for example, your band included, you got like two seconds, literally, of my time. Like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. Do I like your band? Yeah. When you have this stupid <laughs> three-minute intro, you are shooting yourself in the foot so bad. Just wanted to get that out there. If, if you're in a band, you're like, no, bro, we need to add more intro. No, just drop the intro. You don't even want the intro. Bring me in with your super awesome singles so that I'm enticed to listen to your album that has the seven minute intro, but don't send me the seven minute. Anyway, carry on. I love you. You're good. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think it's uh, one of these things that a lot of prog bands, specifically all night, <laughs> you know, we, there's a lot of things that we're into uh, yeah. that uh, are not, yeah, are, are not really that. Um, um, that, that most people wouldn't be into, so to say. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that that was one of the things, and then uh, a lot of things we no- we had noticed over the years also that was every time we did a live show, uh, you would usually have like a time limit, and it would always be so incredibly difficult to fill uh, to to fill a good to build a good set list because uh, we would have so many long songs, like we we would have so many ten minute songs, and uh, and sometimes we would sit there and we'd have like all right we we can play for an hour. We have a set list of uh, 55 minutes. We could fill a five-minute song in, but we don't. We don't have. We don't have any five-minute song to fill in. Like yeah. every every song that would fit at the end of the show or longer, longer than that. And so, so we thought, like you know, if we do an album like that, this might be a little bit easier in the future as well. Mm-hmm. But um, of course, this this was not the main reason to go for this direction. But these were you know tiny things that kind of helped in. Um, motivating uh, the direction so to say and then we yeah we wanted to write a little bit more guitar oriented as a lot of our older stuff might have been a little bit uh, more uh, keyboard oriented or like with a lot of more um like yeah a lot more synth based and so we decided to kind of switch the gears and put the guitar a little bit more in front this time okay so are they piano songs are they guitar songs i guess my question is when you sit down to write a song and I guess kind of like the core of my question, is it a piano song and then you add in some other stuff or is it a guitar song and you add some other stuff? Because when you mentioned keyboards and you also mentioned synth, I mean, there's, there's a wide array of things that you can do on a keyboard from a piano sound to a pad sound to, you know, a plethora of things. And even in the studio, you might still back up cleans with a synthesizer. You might still back up bass with a synthesizer. Especially in a exactly. more, yeah, especially in a more modern production, that you might end up having a lot of those things anyway. So, I mean, I guess maybe take us through that. When you guys are sitting down to write songs, you know, what's the campfire song? Is it a piano at its core? <laughs> is it a, is it a guitar at its core? What's the campfire version of the song? Well, is since uh, since it's basically me writing all basically all of the music, it it usually ends up being uh, the guitar. 
Okay. So, uh, so th that's where it all originates from. Uh, but there might be, you know, sometimes there are some few sections within the songs that are written by some uh, other members in the band, like uh, our keyboard player Eric has written uh, some, some riffs uh, that can be found in Into the Void, for example. And uh, so, so, so there are some, some few parts that are originally intended for, or written, composed on, on a different uh, instrument, but most of the time, yeah, everything is uh, mainly composed through the, through the guitar as, as the main centerpiece. And despite this, yeah, the, the guitar has not really been the forefront, maybe, of what, what we've done uh, before. Mm -hmm. Then my next question... Rainbow pads come in handy. You can put at least <laughs> how many colors are there in a rainbow? You can put that many questions in there. So how do you do that? How do you make a song more guitar forward? Is it a tone choice? Like are you just boosting one and a half to three K or whatever in the guitar tone to get it to push through a mix? Or are you writing it differently so that the guitar is more forward? Yeah, uh, I think uh, one of the things that... Um when we when we started writing for Seventh Dimension, I had this habit of kind of putting strings on everything, and um, and uh, I kind of got so used to doing that that it started to have this negative effect on me in the sense that if I wouldn't have strings somewhere, it would feel almost empty. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I would, I think that the reason for this is because I, at the time, I used to compose the songs within like just like Guitar Pro and just hear the songs back in just this terrible, like thin MIDI audio, right? And uh, and that, it's kind of like and, a cheap I, demo. Yeah, I mean, it, it absolutely works, uh, and especially if you can, re if, if you by doing that a lot and then making the real the real song out of it, you kind of with time start to uh, get better at imagining what the song is gonna sound like at the end. Yeah. But I think in the beginning, I had this tendency to write songs in guitar pro, and because it was MIDI, I would think like, huh, it's like missing something, uh, and I would add like strings or like a lot of like keyboard arrangements to the, to the song. Um, but but now, like in the later years, when I've been starting doing like real demos in Cubase by recording the guitar and programming the other instruments, then the 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 whole kind of sound image of the song changes, and you start to realize that you don't need all those layers to get that that heavy, uh, that punchy, or, or like like full sound and yeah. and i think that has allowed us to kind of realize that we can you know take away the um, the strings and the keyboard uh, stuff uh, occasionally and even better because then once it comes in it has that 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 impact right uh, that impact that uh, otherwise disappears if it's just a constant so yeah. that was one way of uh, kind of pushing the guitar more in the front um, but we also try to kind of you know reinvent how w what the keyboard would be doing. Uh, there's so much you can do with with, with, with the keyboard, and trying to have the keyboard kind of join in on the riffs, and also have a little bit more riff oriented songs. What does that mean, having a riff oriented song? What does that mean? Well, like more like um, um, try we, we try to write a little bit more like memorable riffs or like catchy riffs or riffs that would be more recognizable uh, instead of uh, just writing parts based on maybe like a nice chord progression of course we, we still pay attention to building a nice chord progression but uh, a lot of times we would have just parts but they wouldn't really feel like these memorable riffs in that sense it would maybe be more about what the melody of the vocals or the mem or a melody on the on the on the keyboards uh, but um like yeah so with with riffs we but by, by, by making something that was a little bit more riff oriented we wanted to have some yeah some more um, yeah i guess just memorable catchy and also like reoccurring riffs that you would recognize and uh, and uh, and in order to also because we wanted to make a heavy album, we also wanted to give that kind of headbang friendly element to the music and guitar. Like some coming up with good guitarists really helps with that. Yeah. 
Okay, one last question, and then we got a jet, which is, how do you set out to create a heavier album? Do you just get angry? <laughs> what What do you do? I mean, I guess the core of the question that I've always had throughout my entire life, Luca, is what is this thing called heavy? How do, you know, what, what, what yeah. is it? And, and what is it, and how did you engineer it into the record? It is a, it is a good question. It's not as... Um it's not as simple as one would uh, think. Like, what is what is heavy music, right? Yeah. And uh, I've seen some of uh, you know some bands that I love release um, records that are like heavy, but they don't have maybe the guitar tones that you would typically associate with heavy music, right? But they so or like is a how is an album heavy through 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 its lyrics or there, there's many way to make something heavy. But I think in um, in our case, we wanted to have something that sounded sounded badass. So like riffs that kind of make you uh, kind of um, you know lower lower your eyebrows and kind of like oh hell yeah you know like uh, <laughs> have a <laughs> that brings out uh, the 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 mean uh, the mean side of you right yeah and so uh, so I mean we've always been very. Uh, a very minor sounding band like we we don't have many happy songs uh mm. but uh i think we've had like mo- mo- a lot of times it's been like very like gloomy and sad atmospheres and this time we try to kind of switch that around to being more like aggressive and uh, and, uh, and and angry sounding like we have uh, definitely a few tracks on the album that sound Angry due due to the the tempo that's going on, or uh, the um, yeah the, the the fast riffs that might be going on, uh, or the drumming, and so so yeah, anger and like intensity and mean, like the, the just uh, like this feel this feeling of like um, a really mean evil riff was kind of what we what we imagined when we thought of heavy this time around. Yeah. Whenever I've come across it myself, I've always you catch yourself in a physical moment where you lose your consciousness and just go, "Yeah, that was that's mean, that's nasty, that's you know that," and it's almost like I want to call it being in the pocket, whatever it is. The double pedal kicks in at the right time because if there's anything I hate, it's yeah. it's it's a misuse of double pedal where it it's like why is it there, um, or the band isn't locked together. Which usually happens with local bands live. They're not locked together, and it just sounds like a mess on stage. But, yeah, it's almost like metal that's angsty, but in the pocket angsty. So it's not like R&B and disco in the pocket where you're like, man, I'm grooving, this is great, I'm dancing. I don't have control over my body anymore. It's more like, I just punched that guy, and this is amazing. I guess. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the kind of uh, connect trying to connect with that almost primitive feeling mm-hmm. of just like Arr! like that uh, that kind of in, yeah the feel the, the 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 pleasure of just excitement and intensity. Yeah, the pleasure. Adrenaline. Of, yeah, adrenaline. Kind of, adrenaline. Yeah. Excitement. Intensity. Mm-hmm. Groovy. So we chatted about recording in a pandemic. We chatted about producing a heavy record. We chatted about writing catchy riffs. We chatted about just living in Japan in general. We chatted about, I believe, at some point, at least in my head, we chatted about you practicing the art of Kaizen while living in in Japan and how that's had a positive influence on your life, even though you want to leave Japan and go back to Sweden with your Japanese girlfriend, which probably one of the best exports you'll ever do, or imports, whichever way you want to look at it. Exactly. Um... On today's show notes, we've got the music videos, lyric videos for Resurgence, Black Sky, Into the Void. So if you're listening in on Apple Music, Spotify, go to the show notes. If you're watching on today's uh, website, the rockmetalpodcast.ca or YouTube, same thing in the show notes. You'll have access to the two music videos. Click on them, watch them, enjoy them. You can also check out the website 7th dash or hyphen, 7th hyphen dimension dot net. It's available in the show notes. Go there, spend money. And then also as well, I'm crafting an email to get you in touch with um, another arm to the world, we'll call it, so that you guys can reach, potentially anyway, uh, a larger market. Because I 
participate in A&R artists and repertoire with a few different uh, labels. And there's one that I think would be a good fit for you. So we've chatted about a lot of things. We've had a good time. Did I miss anything? Absolutely. Did I miss anything, Luku? I don't think so. Okay. I think you pretty much covered it. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Anytime. It was a great time. Nice meeting you, John.